Hello everyone, the Nordberry here and in this video let us learn how a hospital works. That is the hospital workflow. So it starts with the patient. Now the patient can either walk into the OPD or in the emergency room. Let us assume the patient walks into an OPD or outpatient department which is also known as a clinic. Now there as a doctor you take a history of the patient which tells you about the symptoms of the patient for example pain abdomen or abdominal pain and then you perform a clinical examination which gives you particular signs for example a Murphy's sign then based on these symptoms and signs that is history and clinical examination you may be very sure about a particular diagnosis then you write a provisional diagnosis and if you are not very sure about a particular diagnosis, rather you have a set of three or four diagnoses in your mind, then you write them down as the differential diagnosis. Now, this provisional diagnosis or differential diagnosis has to be confirmed. That is done using certain investigations. Now, after investigations, once the diagnosis is confirmed, we move towards the final diagnosis. That is, the provisional or differential diagnosis is made a final diagnosis by means of investigation. Now, based on this final diagnosis, we proceed towards treatment. Now, this treatment can be a lifestyle modification like salt restriction in your diet, exercising, yoga, etc. Or there can be medical management like prescribing the, prescribing the patient with pills or tablets or ointments. Or there can be a surgical management maybe a gallbladder surgery or an appendix surgery or a thyroid surgery, stuff like that. Or, and finally, after you perform the treatment, you try to look for the response of the treatment in the patient, which is known as prognosis. And after this prognosis, the patient may get cured or the disease may get managed or the patient may die. So basically, this is what the hospital workflow looks like. In this entire workflow, the most daunting decision is which investigations to order. So let us understand that. So investigations can be classified or looked in different ways. The one way can be based on the subjects that you read in your medical school or medical college. So starting from anatomy. Now anatomical investigations include radiology. For example, the USG, MRI, CT scan, x-rays, etc. Then we come to biochemistry. So biochemistry deals with testing the chemicals in body fluids like urea, creatinine, thyroid stimulating hormone, blood glucose, etc. Then we have physiology and pathology. They share certain investigations like the hematology ones. Now hematology includes TCDC, ESR, hemoglobin, peripheral blood smear and all other components of a complete blood count. And physiology apart from being a part of hematological investigations has its own part known as electrophysiology which deals with electrical investigations such as an EKG, electroencephalogram, electromyogram, etc. Then pathology has its own investigations like biopsy, FNSE, etc. Now pharmacology is another subject that you read in medical schools but pharmacology as such doesn't have any investigations for of its own. We move on to microbiology. Now microbiology has investigations such as culture, antibiotic sensitivity test, allergy test which is known as patch test, etc. Then we move to forensic medicine. Now, forensic medicine deals with tox toxin screening, drug screening, etc. And another main important part of forensic medicine is autopsy or performing a post-mortem investigation. But that is after death. So we don't uh, really consider that a part of investigations. Then we have ophthalmology. Ophthalmology has its own investigations like the biometry, gonioscopy, etc. And ENT, which has its own investigations like audiometry. And finally, there is one subject that we are not taught in that detail in MBBS, but is an important part of the entire hospital workflow that is known as the nuclear medicine. Now, nuclear medicine involves investigations which require radioactive isotopes. For example, a PET scan or a PET CT or a PET MRI. Now, these investigations can be looked into in a whole different aspect also. Like you can have certain investigations which you perform to confirm the diagnosis. You perform certain investigations to know the extent of the disease. That means to know the staging or grading of the disease because that will influence your choice of treatment. And finally, you do certain investigations to plan the treatment of the disease. For example, if we take a case of 
breast cancer, you perform a biopsy of the breast cancer to confirm the diagnosis that it is a cancer and not a benign tumor or any other pathological condition. Then you to know the extent of the disease, basically whether the disease is a metastatic breast cancer or a non-metastatic breast cancer, you go for uh, a chest x-ray or chest CT to look for lung metastasis and stuff. And finally, to plan a treatment of the breast cancer, for example, a mastectomy, you uh, perform certain pre-anesthetic checkup, which includes certain blood investigations, ECG, etc. This will tell you whether the patient is fit to undergo the surgery or not. So now, based on these two approaches, that is the subject-wise approach, including anatomy, radiology, biochemistry, physiology, pathology, etc. And the approach to look into diseases like to confirm diagnosis, to know the extent of the disease and plan treatment, you can have a grid of investigations. And based on that, you can easily choose what investigations you want to perform in order to reach to a final diagnosis. Now, this is how a hospital works towards the patient care and patient treatment. I hope you have understood this concept. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share this video among your peers and friends of medical school or college. And by any chance, if you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you never ever miss a video from my channel. If you want to get notes and flashcards, you should follow me on my Instagram and Facebook account. The links are given in the description box. Also, if you want to get in touch, my phone number, Insta handle, Facebook handle and email ID are provided over here. And for biology related content, you can follow the YouTube channel Animated Biology with Arpan, who is a proud collaborator of the Nord Medic. And you can contact with Arpan through his social media handles, which will be in the description box below. Until then, bye-bye. See you in the next one.